Okay, I'm going to try to get a little test pulled off before the sun go, gets too far down. I've been uh, investigating these toaster elements. They're nice little plates for one thing. They've got the fiberglass insulation plate. And it's all nice and flat. So you can make some heat plates out of these, I'm sure. In fact, I'm going to try to use one. And you can take these uh, the element material out of the it's uh, nickel chromium and I'm going to cut it in different lengths and see uh, and check the resistance and hook it up to a 12 volt which is actually about 19 volts open circuit and see what kind of heat I can generate with different lengths of pieces so we can make heaters out of 12 volt panels also so for the first test I cut one piece of this nickel chromium toaster ribbon material I think they call it uh, at 12 inches and I'll check the resistance right now 2.0 perfect 1.9 2.0 all right this is the first test with a piece of raw nickel chromium element out of a toaster I cut a piece that calculates up to the correct length for the resistance and voltage that I have here. I've got 19 volts, 120 watts, which equals to be about 6 amps. So the resistance is, should be about 3. It was worked out to be 2 at a foot, so I made this one 18 inches. This is real, just rough. Let me put my gloves on. Now this won't shock me, but could, it, and it won't get hot real fast in theory, I don't think. Put my gloves on anyway. I put these clamps on the, this. This is a, a, an older solar panel I had. It's a good solar panel. They were expensive back in the old days. You guys can get them for nothing now. Okay, let's see what we get. Let's see if I can get. Some. Now, there he is. This should heat up. I shouldn't. Uh, it won't short. This material is made. Now, I don't know if you should touch that. Well, this 19 volts, I guess it ain't gonna, I'm not gonna really. Ooh, ooh, that's hot already, big time. <laughs> that is definitely hot. Okay, first I cut one piece at 12 inches and it had a, a two ohms resistance. And that was too much, too short sure enough it would have been too because so I cut one at eight and I could smell it I thought maybe not <laughs> is it burn yeah it's burning the wood I could see it's burning the wood over here I'll move it a little bit yeah I could smell the wood so this might be a, uh, running a little strong this is 18 inches this is 18 inches 19 volts 120 watts so that's real strong there. I can feel the heat. And this won't shock you, but it'll burn you. Now you get up in the higher voltages, it'll shock you unless it's coated like the ones on the uh, stove element. So that length right there would make a small heater. You make a cigarette lighter. You can make, I mean, use your imagination. You can, you can make a wood burning tool because it's doing that right now. I'll move this and show you. And there's the burn in the wood. So that was a, an 18 inch piece. I don't think I need to go any smaller. 12 inches pushing it because it, it, it calculates 18. So you might even go more, I don't know. It's just an interesting little experiment. A couple things I learned from these toaster elements. The newer ones are spot welded mechanic just spot welder basically and the older one I have is just put together with a little screw and a bolt so you can mechanically fasten this element material you can't solder it because the solder melts too easily at a low temperature weld it that's a kind of small stuff so I like this and this is actually stainless steel of all things it had the wire just wrapped right with a screw. I, I took it off. It was in an older toaster. So in the old days, they just took the copper wire, 
got it out away from the heat a bit with this stainless steel strap so the magnet won't stick to it it sticks to the screw and so we could use stainless or copper copper is a high temperature i like the stainless they used it for a reason it's Do a test on uh, drilling a terracotta pot. I'm going to use a 5 16 Milwaukee Diamond Max. So it's a diamond tip little hole saw. Just going to trick it. Not bad so far. Except it's going to work fine. I'm starting at an angle. Hold it steady. I'm getting. A cut. I already got a cut started. Okay. Now I'm tilting it up slowly. It's cutting fine. They said to kind of walk it. Yeah, I forgot about that. Rotate it. Yeah, it's cutting better now. Should have been rotating it. There we go. Here's the toaster element plate. It actually works out to be the perfect resistance for this solar panel I'm going to test it on. Well, I'm getting it, but I, got, I think I could have made that little strip a little bit more narrow. Okay, I managed to get it in there without destroying it. Here's our finishing. This is the 275 watt solar panel I'm using. 39 volts, it's a 24 volt solar panel. Rated 24. Ohm's law says volts times amps equals watts. Well, the panel, I know it's 39 volts and I know it's 275 watts. So when I take the watts divided by volts, 275 divided by 39 I get 7.05 amps and the other part of Ohm's law says resistance times amps equals volts so resistance of 5.5 of the element times 7.05 amps comes out to be 38.77 volts almost exactly what I needed here <laughs> Okay, it's all hooked up. I'm about to test it. I can feel heat. Yeah, sure enough. Okay, it's reading 29. Now we'll see how long that takes to heat up. 47, 48 Celsius. 1138. It's at 94 Celsius, so that's 201 degrees Fahrenheit and climbing. That's at the bottom. It's still cool on top. 371 Celsius is 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Looks like 419 was the top because it's starting to bounce back down. Five ten in the evening. It's cooling down. Still at 112 Celsius. So 112 Celsius, 111. 112 Celsius is 233 degrees Fahrenheit. That's down in the bottom area. Still warm up top. 